In this episode of Another Zelda Podcast, Kate and David talk about female representation through the history of the Legend of Zelda franchise. Hello and welcome to another episode of Another Zelda Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Kate May, and I'm here as always with David Geisler. David, how are you? I'm well. Yes, as always, when we are here in your house, which is the uh, the mainstay of the show. When I am here, I am as always <laughs> with you. When you're here, you're always with me. Yes. Would you ever do an episode with someone else if I if like if we found someone in Milwaukee and I couldn't get here? I am scared to talk to people. <laughs> I don't. You're so outgoing, though. I'm. I'm not uh, joking right now. I'm not outgoing. Oh, it's like you got to get to know you, kind of thing. Yeah, I don't mm. like small talk. I'm really mm. introverted, so it's really hard for me to kind of like just automatically be able to talk to someone. It is easier when I'm one on one, so hmm. that would be easier than like talking to a group. Yeah. Um. For example, when we recorded our water. Dungeon, Dungeons right. episode. There yeah. were so many of us that I was kind of like, oh, how do I? Move? But you kind of drove that episode. You had the notes, everything. I think, I think, I get it. I hear you. I think you've, I think you've got the vibe down a little bit more than you might realize. To be honest, I don't know, but I, I don't know. That would be different for. for me. I guess it also. I literally bring the microphones, but <laughs> yeah, I think you'd have to be there since you have all the equipment. <laughs> So, oh, Kate, okay. what are we talking about today? So today we are going to talk about um, the female characters in the Legend of Zelda series. Just kind of like a discussion overview about how, you know, how their portrayal has changed over the years, mm-hmm. how I would like to see female characters in the future. Um, this was actually suggested to me by a friend of mine, Sarah, who... I um, did not know that. Yeah, she's like... Because um, I... I, she plays a lot of video games. Um, she's not like super necessarily into The Legend of Zelda specifically, but she just plays a lot of games on Switch. Um, oh, okay. So I was like, what do you guys think? What would you like to hear about? And she was like, oh, maybe something about um, the just the female characters and women and how they're portrayed in The Legend of Zelda since you know it's The Legend of Zelda, so why not talk about Zelda and then the other female characters as well? And I thought that was a cool idea. Um Another, well, we have another idea from, from them as well, but I don't know if I should spoil it on this show. Well, let's let's plant the seed. What I don't even know so, what you're talking about. Yeah, another, another topic they brought up was maybe like the, the concept of justice and kind of like, I don't know. I'm listening. And just justice and honor and maybe we can broaden that a little bit uh-huh. and how that is kind of like brought up in the series or addressed or anything like as that. As a theme? Or yeah, like as a lit- theme. Mm, interesting. I don't know. But um, I thought the the female characters, I could definitely speak to that. And as some of you may mm. know, David is not female, but no. he, you can, you can chime in too. <laughs> like you can please offer your opinions and stuff. I uh, grew, if I may, I grew up with two sisters and no brothers. That's true. And uh, uh, so my experience of play, there was a lot of Barbies. Sure. There was a lot of like, I, sometimes I could talk them into playing a game with me, but there definitely wasn't punching each other in the shoulder or any, like, I guess that's what boys do or like throwing footballs around. I, none of that. Uh, and you have nieces, so you can oh speak gosh. to their, what, how they feel about the game, honestly. Like maybe they yeah. talk about where are the girls or, or they dress Link up in, you oh, know, interesting. the clothing, yeah. the Gerudo clothing in Breath of the Wild or something like that. But we can. I wish I would have gotten a little comment from them, but anyway. But uh, yeah, that's the topic for today's episode. But before we kind of get into it, uh, let's maybe go over I have some a feedback. Ton of listener feedback, if you don't mind. Yeah, let's do I it. I say we quick. I have like a lot, and I want to get it in before our season's done. And I sure. also want to spend a lot of time on Link to the Past on the next episode. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to front load a little bit here, and we're just going to fly through some of these. Okay. Sounds good because I mean, this today's episode is just kind of like a discussion. Um, it's not heavily researched or anything that it doesn't really need to be it's like how do you feel about this and that's about it so we're just okay. gonna have a little little chat i love it i love it I, I noticed i think you threw a tweet out there did you get anything back from that or anything you did not tweet i did not i don't have a twitter <laughs> 
Did you tweet? There was something our... in social where you were like, Oh yeah, I posted on my Facebook page for oh, friends of mine. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, to see if they could kind of uh, tell me their thoughts. Unfortunately, I did not specify a deadline, so I did not. <laughs> I got I got some bites, and they're like, Yeah, I'll totally send you some stuff, and I haven't gotten it yet. But that is not their oh, fault. I did not tell them. Oh, by the way, I need this by this Saturday. Yeah. Can't wait. I'll get it to you in a month. Um. So I mean, we can. I can always bring it up on future episodes yeah. maybe as their own listener feedback um one of my friends did say she loved the show so that was neat said she loved the show yeah who's that that's even, cool i didn't even know she listened who's this person uh, her name's Lindsay. so hi Lindsay, if you're Dang. listening that was pretty cool hi, Lindsay, I, whoever you are. i'm always surprised when people i actually know are listening it makes it a little different because it's not a random person or a stranger that i don't know it's someone that you know Knows who I am. <laughs> yeah, it is fun. It's neat. It's cool. We have this broader conversation through social and the people chiming in and all of that. But when sometimes you get these like in real life experiences too, it's really neat. Yeah. Oh, I'm so pleased. Uh, oh, man, we're almost done with season two. This has been quite the experience. So mm-hmm. uh, to that point, let me read a bunch of listener feedback. Okay. Um, over on Instagram for our non-Dungeon Dungeons episode. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, Beck Phillips just quickly commented. He said, hey, thanks again for taking my suggestions. It was a really cool episode. I do believe that Beck Phillips actually did suggest this episode on oh. our Discord channel. Nice. Once in a while, I'll reach out to the Discord folks and say, hey, we're looking for ideas. And that was that. So keep. I'm going to keep on moving. Uh, <laughs> this is on our Hey Listen episode, which was a, our listener feedback episode that we did this season. Mm-hmm. Kate, episode 17. Uh, Jeremy Horn said over on YouTube, he said, Kate is hilarious. I know. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> I am, aren't I? <laughs> you just broke me for a half a second. That doesn't happen too often on podcasts. Uh, Kate, Kate is hilarious. You guys may hate each other, but your duo of knowledge and humor is awesome. I did see that one. I <laughs> loved that comment because we joke about how like how convincing we are at being friends on the podcast, but then secretly hate each other. Yeah. So that's where that came from, just so everyone knows in case they have not heard us say that yeah, before. Absolutely. Oh, that yeah, is the yeah, reason yeah. for that. Uh, over on our top 10 emotional storylines, I believe this might have been a comment on Instagram. Uh, Shadow132 said, um, what, the one that gets me is the family in Kakariko Village. This is uh, to Breath of the Wild. This was an episode where we just talked about uh, favorite emotional storylines in mm. any games. Mm-hmm. But Shadow132 here, and I, I think I kind of mentioned this story. And Kate, I think it's going to click with you as soon as I bring it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, one that gets me is the family in Kakariko Village whose wife slash mother lost her life to the Yiga clan. The heirloom side quest story with Dorian is sad enough, which is the one where you follow him up and he's done the deal with the Yiga. And Mm -hmm. I think it almost as ransom or bribery, they, they killed his wife. It's it's horribly tragic. Um, um, Dorian is sad enough, but the kids is what kills me. And I agree. Shadow one, three, two. If you, if you talk to the kids while they're in the town enough, Kate, perhaps you have, perhaps you haven't. Um, they speak about their mom. They think she's just gone. They think she's lost. Mm. But here it is. Uh, in the mornings, the younger sister, Kotai, will go up to the shrine and say something about finding her mother because she thinks they are playing hide and seek. The older sister, Coco, who knows a little bit more, talks about missing her mother and now she and how she needs to be like a mother to Koda and cook for her in the Cooking for Coco quests. And in the mornings, while Kotoi plays, she secretly goes to her mother's grave, which is where all those rocks fall. Mm-hmm. I experienced this one personally, and I was like, oh. Um, Kota play, plays. She secretly sneaks off and goes to her mother's grave to mourn it as if um, to mourn. And if it's raining, says something about her mother not being able to see her cry when it rains. Oh, my god! <gasps> Breaks my heart every time. Oh, wow. I Holy think Lizzie was... smokes. Lizzie was talking about that, right? When we yeah. were... Yeah, Disgusting. that is that's some intense stuff going yeah, on right now. That's so much detail to go into something that someone might not even ever see. Like I'm, I don't, I never did that quest, so mm-hmm. I never. I know, or even it. just clicking around, or <laughs> clicking around like it's an a, a old PC adventure game. Uh, <laughs> even just kind of talking to NPCs, you might see the kids. They say something like, "I'm playing hide and seek my mother," and it's not until you have a couple of these conversations right. that you piece it all together, and you're like, "Oh, yeah, you fully understand." What's going on? Yeah. Um, okay. So let's see. Uh, Paul Politic P A U L A T C K um, said, "I was asking about I was asking about the Deku Scrub uh, storyline in Majora's Mask mm-hmm. about emotional storylines and Paul." 
Tick said, uh, that storyline and the scene where you see the butler grieving his son really terrified me as a kid. Like Darmani and Maiku, Darmani's the Goron who you get the mask from in Majora's Mask. Okay. Uh, Maiku is the Zora who you get the mask from. Mm-hmm. They were already dead or dying, you know? But what about that young Deku? Was he dying as well or did Skull Kid assassinate him just to pull a mean prank to, to essentially to get the the mask. Oh my. I know. So the, the they don't really speak about it too much in Majora's Mask, but the three masks that you get to transform yourself, mm-hmm. they, uh, let's just say, come from a soul, right? And uh, the Goron is already dead, so his spirit imbues the mask, you know, and gives it to you. Mm-hmm. The Zora, you find him and he's at the edge of death and says, here, take my spirit, we'll say, in, take in the mask. Take my face. Take my face. And um, but what you don't realize is in the very beginning you start as Deku Link or you get put it turned into Deku Link mm-hmm. and one could only guess what Skull Kid or Majora's Mask through Skull Kid did to that little Deku scrub. Oh my. Ugh. That's dark. Over on our Ganon episode, Mr. T Bomb commented <laughs> Wow. Change of pace here. Change in tone. Um, on our Ganon episode, Mr. T Bomb back in September said in all caps. How does this channel not have more than 350 subs? <laughs> well, I think we're up to like the 430s now, which is really, really awesome. Um, you know, large or small, we're happy that people are listening. Our, our analytics show that YouTube is kind of just a sliver of the people that actually listen to the show. Mm-hmm. But still super exciting. Thank you so much, Mr. <laughs> T-Bomb, for the the encouragement. For the outrage. The, po- <laughs> the positive outrage. Um, over on our Hey Listen episode, also on YouTube. Uh, Alyssa Cat. So Alyssa, my coworker, who was also on our emotional storylines, mm-hmm. top ten emotional storylines, she said, "When you all, what? When you all are in my life? Question mark. Late night in my bed after a long day at work, and I'm unwinding from my day off. Really enjoyed this, including. Oh, right, 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 right. This is on our Hey Listen episode. This is just she's kind of replying to us talking about one of her comments. Gotcha. Uh, really enjoying this, including listener feedback. Really shows you shows how you include your listeners, and I'm all for it. Keep up the great work, guys. Thank you very uh-huh. much, Alyssa. She's literally part of the Zelda family. She was on an episode now, which is super cool. Nice. Oh, another Hey Listen one. Wow, so much listener feedback from our listener from feedback listener episode. Feedback. That's great. Uh, link cool, nice. No spaces. Link cool, link nice. cool. What? Link cool, nice. Link cool, nice. Uh, said. Where can I start? One of the greatest podcasts I've heard out there. Been following since season one. And every time you guys make me replay an old game, I love it. <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> Thank you, Link Cool Nice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going through just a few more real quick. Oh, this is interesting. On our favorite Gorons episode, um, we were talking about Phyrus, the big kind of Lord of the Rings boss. Mm-hmm. Um, Phyrus is actually Darbus, the patriarch of the Gorons. Uh, let's Fun see. Favorite Triforces. <coughs> this is kind of funny. Audie said over on YouTube, I usually listen in the shower, uh, <laughs> but you guys started off with Skyward Sword, so I had to jump out of the shower and panic fast forward just to not get spoiled, oh. LOL. <laughs> Haven't played that one. <laughs> That's awesome. Sorry about that. Sorry, Audie. <laughs> Adam Bomb 13 on Instagram sent us a direct message and said, "Hello, I'm a 31-year-old electrical engineer student who also has who is also a military vet, veteran with a wife and two kids. The only break I get from my crazy hectic like life is listening to your amazing podcast. Mm-hmm. I have only played the original NES Zelda and Breath of the Wild." Oh wow. Yeah, that's cool. I am hooked for life now and can't wait for other Zelda games to come to Switch and more of your episodes. Adam Bomb 13 that's amazing. That's so cool. Thank you so much for getting in touch with us. We're so pleased to be a part of your life in any way. And uh, so excited for you to play more Zelda games. I actually have a message. If I can share Let's do one it. that was sent to me by on Instagram here. Um, the screen name is We Speak in Sounds. And he says, hey, Kate, my name is Randy. And I wanted to personally reach out to you. I was searching for ways to reconnect um, with my favorite game series of all time. And I found your podcast. I can't I, begin yeah, to going. tell you how wonderful it is to relive such amazing memories through your interesting conversations. Each podcast is so different yet so relatable. I really can't wait for the next season with Majora's Mask. Yeah, we'll see how I feel about that one. Uh, he said, um, da, 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 da. I'm sure you get these all the time, but thanks for doing what you do. Ocarina of Time was my first Zelda experience that I was lucky enough to share with my dad. 
Ever since my dad had surgery and I moved back home to help take care of him, I've been going through the classics with him, and I've also been introducing him to this podcast. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that cool? And then he also said um, it has uh, Zelda has also inspired so much of his band's music. What? So, yeah. I recognize should... this screen name. We speak in sounds. I think I might have communicated with this individual as well. Oh, cool. But not through a DM. We're talking about starting to use some other music in the show. And there's oh, been a awesome. couple. Full disclosure, uh, I've received permission from the Zelda and Chill guy to use some of his music on our shows. Nice. It might become our new intro. He said, cool. he basically said quickly, like we'll still figure out something a little bit more professional, <laughs> but he kind of did reach out and it might've been through We Speak and Sounds. He might've connected us. This is all coming back to me now. Um, anyways, I don't want to pull away from his wonderful message. That is great. We Speak and Sounds, if you and your dad are liking Zelda games and liking this show, that only makes me happier. Yeah, that's, that's really awesome. cool. Bringing, bringing families together. Another Zelda podcast. Uh, yes, I think, I think. Do you think? I think let's do it. I've got like th- three more and then we'll get to this topic. Okay, okay. <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> um, we do like to shout y'all out. Over so. on over on uh, YouTube, Jackson Stallings said, did Kate say she had a copy of Hyrule Historia on a previous episode? Mm. They include a comic manga that happens before the events of Skyward Sword. Whoa, even be- so canonically even before. Oh, wow. We have the Arts and Artifacts book out right now, but Hyrule Historia is over there in the corner. Yep. Um, just thought y'all would be interested. Absolutely, Jackson. We'll take a look at that. Yeah, I have not seen that yet. I have definitely looked through that book, but not everything because it's a lot. So <laughs> I think we're going to have to do a comic book episode because there are some like a link to the past comics out there and stuff like that. It could be cool. Cool. We're starting to build a season three. I'm loving it. Uh, Andrew Wallach over on Facebook. Facebook, I believe, said, just listen to the Emotional Storylines episode, and it was great. Uh, Just was sad that no one mentioned Groose from Skyward Sword. Interesting. I love his arc in the game, going from jerk to lovable hero. Mm -hmm. And what makes it so amazing is his music, the great trombone riff, which we did speak about Mm -hmm. in the Skyward Sword music. I Mm -hmm. thought it was kind of Mm -hmm. Goron-esque. And then hearing it change in one of the scenes at the end of the game to string instruments. Oh, it was beautiful. That's cool. That's cool, cool, Andrew. I did not notice that. And yeah, what's up? I, I think that I just don't like his character so much in the beginning <laughs> that, uh, well, I wasn't on the emotional storylines episode, right, right. but like, I, I don't know that I would have included it only because I, I hate who he is at first, but I agree. He makes a lovely transition to being a really supportive and awesome partner. Yeah, yeah, of Link's. absolutely. I think we'll end with this, though. I haven't, I don't know exactly what this one's about. This is a comment either on Instagram or Discord. I honestly can't tell. And I don't have the person's name. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, let's go for it. Uh, it said, hey, just wanted to say I love the pod. Legend of Zelda is one of my favorite things and one of the biggest things my brother and I have bonded over for mm. years. It's so awesome to listen to other people from the Midwest talk about it and love it. Hey. I have a topic idea for you guys, but I don't know if you already have plans for it or if you've already done one, something like it the women of the Zelda franchise and how women are represented throughout the games. What? Also, why hasn't Link been a female? And I would argue his androgyny and Linkle aren't enough. Or why hasn't... Th- my mind is blown right now. <laughs> or why hasn't there been a game where Zelda saves Link? What would those games be like? I just have a lot of thoughts and opinions on all this, and I know I can't be the only one. Anyways, have an awesome day, and keep up the amazing work. You guys are crushing it. I am so sorry that this screen grab cut off the the screen name of this person. I'll dig back into our social and find it. Maybe I can bring it up wow. next episode. This is a perfect way to get into our episode. How about that? So also, I mean, I know that I screen grab these things when they come in, but a lot of times I'll read them quickly and I'll throw them in the library and I often honestly forget what they say. So it is pretty authentic when I read them here on the show. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll remember, sometimes I won't. Um, Cool. Let's do this, Kate. All right. Well. Well, wait, is there some some things we can answer here in this comment? Um, uh, Linkle isn't technically canon, but Linkle is awesome. Linkle's in Hyrule Warriors. Um, they kind of created a storyline for her that she's like a link from another universe or something like that, or she's a sister of someone. I can't quite remember. Um, or why hasn't there been a game where Zelda saves Link? Uh, what would that game be like? Um, there was, there's famously one game where Zelda is the playable character and it's the CDI 
game that is, mm-hmm. you know, almost infamous, almost doesn't count. Um, but I don't know. How do you, uh, I guess, I guess maybe we can't answer. What would that game be like? Where would you like to start? Um, well, I mean, we can, we can kind of go into that. I we don't have to talk about this in any particular order. I didn't really have a, let yep. me start with this then. Yeah. What if there was a game where you played from Sheik's perspective? I would love that. So I actually did um, do a bit of Googling, not like a ton of research or anything, just to see what else is out there in regards yeah. to this. And yeah, someone I, f- I found, it looks like a little blog post basically, where they are saying like that was kind of a missed opportunity so far is, is not having that game yet because um, here it's... Here we go. I found it here. It's not like she sat around doing nothing for seven years while Link was sealed away. <laughs> so mm-hmm. what awesome shenanigans did she save Hyrule from? I mean, yeah, that would be that would be a really cool game, I think, because it's like Zelda going into hiding, which, you know, she does all the time, but not in the same way. She's not uh-huh. going into hiding and, you know, being sealed away or, you know, hiding in a castle necessarily. She's right. out there. She's... I don't know if she's looking for Link. I would say, I mean, I always kind of assume that she was like training through Sheikah, through the Sheikah. She was training for yeah. n- for his return. Maybe she even knew it was going to be seven years mm-hmm. later. Or at least like blending into their <clears throat> society. Like she's not, I, I liked that she wasn't, you know, just cowering in a castle somewhere. Yeah. I mean, she definitely has skills. Mm-hmm. And that would have been, yeah, that would be a, an awesome game to play as that character during that Span of time. So would like, it be a prequel game? And then maybe for the kinda, fun yeah. of it, some of those final levels would be Back to the Future 2 style, like in Ocarina. Mm. But but I don't, there isn't much conflict. Sheik is, okay. You'd somehow have to have the, le- the Sheik, just from a game mechanic point of view, mm-hmm. the levels or the journey that Sheik takes pre the hero returning, Link returning. Mm-hmm would have to build up the skill set that could be used so that Sheik could encounter with Link in the moments where Sheik needs to. Right. Right. And then you see it from the other point of view. And then yeah. he just disappears. Or, well, you disappear, actually, because she always, like, throws down her... Snap bead thing. Yep. And then, poof, gone. Like, where does she go? Where'd she go? Let me find out where that is. Um, This person The camera also... just pans to the right, and she's, like, running away. <laughs> <laughs> Not super effective. Um, (laughs) This person also says, or um, what if there was a new Skyward Sword using her very particular role at the temples with new maps, puzzles, and her own set of bosses? I mean, I'm into it. Yeah. um, This person says, like, basically Zelda has a Triforce of Wisdom. Why isn't that used more? You could play as Zelda with more, um, you know, challenging puzzles and more Mm. riddles and more, you know, kind of mental... Uh, like we were talking on our previous episode, how much you like the ice block puzzles or the block like puzzles. Them, yeah. So like, what if that was kind of more something that Zelda would do, but maybe she's, I don't know, moving them with her mind or something like that, hmm. you know, but you have to use your brain instead of like the sword fighting. So maybe it's more of a mental right. challenge. And you could um, even have not quizzes, but things where maybe even from a dungeon to dungeon, you have to recall stuff. Hence the wisdom thing. Like if you're, Taking knowledge with you somehow? Yeah. Um, this this person says, instead of like the normal bosses, what about bosses r- with a big twist requiring some serious forethought and skills to defeat them? Which, I mean, that that's what bosses require, some of them. I mean, especially the Breath of the Wild bosses, yeah. I think, require a little more forethought and like, how do I do this? Whereas the earlier bosses are definitely just like, look for the giant eyeball and hit it with your sword. Yeah. Or, or you could say that most Zelda bosses are like, you figure the puzzle out in the moment so what if <clears throat> again trying to go with this wisdom angle mm-hmm. what if the clues to the bosses or, or the information on what to do for the bosses don't aren't telegraphed in the boss battle mm-hmm. and are rather collected somehow either it's text or it's items or it's something but or there's a context where it's collected and then you have to use your retention and decision making hence wisdom mm-hmm. to apply it yeah you know? I mean, I like adventure games that add puzzles to them. Um, those are usually the types of games that I will get on the Switch, like indie game wise. Mm. Um, those are probably the 
it's kind of like a it's I, I don't necessarily go for platformers. Um, so yeah, I, I like will, them here and there. You jump in for a level, get out. But I really like yeah. what you're talking about too. I like being on an adventure and then also solving a puzzle. Or I mean, my thing would be like a word game, but that's just me because I really like stuff like that. Um, somehow a combination okay. of that. Like I used to play spelling games and stuff like that because I'm a nerd. Um, wow. Yeah. Uh, so I would be totally into like a wisdom centric, you know, Zelda featured game. Um, by the way, this, uh, the blog that I'm referring to is shikaplate.com. So shouting them out. That's something that I found that was like, that's, that's an interesting, uh, viewpoint. They're like, we already have a strong female character. Use her more. You know, we don't need a new character. We don't necessarily need, this is this person's viewpoint. We don't necessarily need, um, Link to be female. Like Link is who Link is and we don't need to change that. We already have Zelda. Like let's use her more. Um, in that vein, I am really interested to see where Breath of the Wild 2 takes us with that as well, because going from the trailer, um, she at least got a haircut. Uh, I hope that's not the only thing that changes. (laughs) Yeah, that trailer, I think, showed zero action, right? We never saw a moment where it was like from behind Link and he's swinging a sword. I think it was all basically cutscenes. Right. So it's impossible to... What I was going to say is like, if it showed a couple shots of Link running around clearly in gameplay and it didn't show Zelda, I'd be a little nervous. Mm -hmm. But it didn't show either yet, so we really don't know. (laughs) If it did show Zelda running around, I'd lose my mind. Uh, Yeah. Um, I don't know... My gut says that probably won't happen in this next game. I, it'd be cool if it yeah. did, even part of the time. The closest know. we got was Spirit Zelda in Spirit Tracks, mm. and she's kind of a mechanic. Mm-hmm. So if it's like Resident Evil 4 style where you just run around <clears throat> with another person, I think that would be less than inspired. I don't think Nintendo would do that. <clears throat> right. Um, so let's go back to the beginning, because we kind of started at the end. Let's go back to the beginning. Fair um, enough. Uh, y'all who listen to our podcast might be aware that we did an episode called Link's Loves, right? So he... Oh, right. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Third episode of the show ever. Yeah. Way, way back when. Um, and that was an episode about how the female characters in the series are, or at least a lot of them are, not all of them. A lot of them are often in love with Link and like, that's their job is just, just right. kind of, or at least that's a big part of their personality, is that they are flirting with Link or in love with him. Some less so, like Tel- Thel- or Thelma or Telma from uh, Twilight Princess. Mm-hmm. She's definitely not in love with Link, but she flirts with him. Right, I see. So there's always kind of some kind of wink, wink, nudge, nudge going on. Um, even Zelda, you know, is... Not in, I don't know that I would say in love with him, but like in Skyward Sword, for example. Yeah, it kind of depends on the game a little. <clears throat> right. So even she is like interested in him in some of the games, yeah, I, I would think say. Skyward Sword's the most <clears throat> romantic, the most, there's mo- the most suggested romance, I think, in Skyward Sword. Yeah, I agree. Um, and early on in those games, obviously, Zelda is also like helpless. She's basically Princess Peach. Like she yeah. just needs to be saved. Yeah. Um. Like such a common, you know, video game trope is he, the hero is male and he has to go and save the princess. Like that is Mario. <laughs> right. Um. So it's an interesting mirror where. Well, and, let me interject real quick. The yeah. reason that is, and I'm not talking about Nintendo or Mario or anything specifically, but generally the reason it's a dude that has to go save a princess is because it was dudes coding this stuff it was like young dudes writing the code sure you know what i mean and that was what that's where it was at in the, the 70s or or, the, or or even the late 60s. you know what i mean so there just wasn't much there wasn't a larger perspective right because it was that's well men there. running the show yeah 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 right and that's also i mean god that that trope that kind of story goes back so far you know knights in shining armor and everything like that that's been around forever basically You're right so it's just kind of building off of a classic trope yeah. of the hero saving the lady. Um, and it's interesting that I think the Legend of Zelda series has changed so much, whereas Princess Peach is pretty much still being Princess Peach. Like, Yes. Super- she, had, she had like one game that was her own, 
and it was a little unfortunate. My opinion of that game was for the DS. Oh, okay. And she was running around. It was Princess Peach's <clears throat> superpowers or something like that. <laughs> and I don't want to get snotty about it, but it was a little unfortunate. Her superpowers were literally her emotions. Oh, God. She would cry. She would get too angry. It was... <laughs> It was perhaps in poor taste, honestly. A little cringy. I thought you were going to say cooking because honestly, she does do cooking in like uh, Paper Mario when you play yeah. as Peach, which was cool about that game. You could play as Peach uh-huh. and Bowser. Yeah, they're like in little. Paper Mario. Yeah, they're like little mini scenes where um, yes, it would yes. switch. Yeah, and you I could would play cut as over to her, right? Peach and she baked cakes. Mm, so. For Bowser, and then he liked him or didn't like him, or she poisoned him or something. I, it's coming back to me. Yep, exactly. So, yay. yeah, yeah. Peach is basically still just the thing. Yeah, she's still something, someone that needs to be rescued, like Super Mario Odyssey. I mean, I haven't beaten the game, so I well, don't at least know if I this think, changes. I think she turns down Mario and Bowser at the end of that game, which is kind of cute. Spoiler alert! But mm-hmm. the whole time she's like on Bowser's floating pirate ship, needing to be saved. Both of them are still competing for her to be their wife. Right. Um, at least that wasn't necessarily part of the you know the Zelda series. Like Link is not out there to marry Zelda or anything like that. Um, he definitely wants to save her um, or protect her, yeah. or he's asked to protect her um, or their friends. I don't. I don't think it's ever like a marriagey thing. I I think dude wants to be a bachelor from, from, from how he acts. <laughs> yeah, very indifferent. I He's don't know. super quiet and finds the exit door. Yep. Um, um, I think I'm trying to think of the original The Legend of Zelda, and it was, yeah, okay, you're saving the princess, but like you don't even really see her till the end. There's not much going on there. It's really more you're <clears> just <throat> going towards Ganon and doing the dungeons. Mm-hmm. In The Adventure of Link, she is kind of more front and center. It's it's even the the opening shot is her essentially as a sleeping beauty, like in a temple. Mm-hmm. And that one is a little bit more like gotta save the princess right off the get-go. Mm-hmm. A link to the past. No, it's just kind of adjacent. So Milo's. Freaking I'm glaring out. at my cat. He's ripping up my couch. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I just want to. I just want to interject. Yeah. Like I think maybe the closest it came to. He's doing it for her and only for her. Might be the adventure of Link. Adventures of Link. I always say it wrong. Yeah, he's usually her her protector of some kind, or just random guy called to mm-hmm. come get her, <laughs> or a lot of times, or save the kingdom. I think most of the time in a Zelda game, or at least the ones that we've seen more recent, he's protecting Hyrule, right? As a and she's kind of a metaphor for Hyrule. You know, there's a bit of that. Yeah, um, and so interestingly. I think you okay? a big. I have a sliver in my hand. Oh no, it's fine. <laughs> um, so as the series went on, um, the female characters became more developed. And I think interestingly, so Ocarina of Time, we just had an episode talking about the development of mm. Ocarina of Time. Um, we've done a review of Ocarina of Time. And obviously it was the a music of Ocarina of Time even. Yeah, it, it was a game changer in so many ways. Yeah, But in getting ready for this episode, I realized it was also a game changer with female characters. I agree. Because now we have Impa for one thing. Who, um, you know, she is the she's Zelda's bodyguard. She oh, yeah. is muscular. You know, she's tough. And if you she, go with the canonical Impa from the original Legend of Zelda, she was a nurse. She was just like a a, a roly poly maid, honestly. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And now she's 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 a a warrior. I don't know. Yeah, I, that's what I have oh, in really? my notes. A warrior. She kind of protected Zelda better than Link was able to. Like she got Zelda away on the horse and she knew she obviously has a lot of knowledge. Um, She was like the leader of her own village. Mm -hmm. She was in charge of that too. Um, And then Link was tasked with protecting Zelda and he failed. (laughs) Like then the Temple of Time happened and Zelda gets taken away in her little pink crystal. So Impa did kind of a better job. So maybe Fair she, enough. she should have stayed. And even Zelda cross-dressing and being in, being uh, incognito and stuff like that it was pretty cool and kind of progressive. But then we still have like the weird naked fairies in Ocarina. It's odd. There's that too. And like everyone's crushing on Link in Ocarina. Yeah. Um, I don't want to take it, anything away, but it is a weird kind of... It's a there's two edges to that game. It's that's odd. true. They did have more to do though. I mean, there were more female characters. It wasn't just Le- uh, Zelda anymore. You know, um, 
they, they've been around, but they, they had yeah. more personalities. They had more roles. They just had more to them in general, the female characters. Is there any female character in the game that can exist on their own without Link? It might be Impa. I yeah. I mean, she's... Like she, narratively, you know what I mean? Yeah, she talks about, you know, I'm aware of the prophecy, and so here you are. Uh, she, I think she does say, like, oh, I can... S- see you're getting stronger or something like that. I think she compliments him in some kind of way, but I almost, I don't know. I almost see her as begrudgingly yeah, kind of like, yeah, she doesn't say like, Oh, you've grown into such a man. Yeah. 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 She's just kind of like, all right, you're doing well. And mm-hmm. you know, but I take this seriously. She mm-hmm. like, she has this air about her. That's like, don't mess this up. Like, this is important to me. Zelda's important to me. I've been guarding her all my life or, yeah. you know, this is a important task. Don't mess it up. Um, so I thought that was cool. You know, she, cool. we talked about, um, I think was a cool element. I think completely unexpected. You wouldn't necessarily expect to see that's what Zelda chose to do with her time is, you know, dress as, you know, someone that I think is supposed to be male, right? I, I think it's supposed to read as male. Right. Yeah. Um, to, you know, protect the kingdom and do what she can and stay away from Ganon and everything like that. Um, mm-hmm. So that was a cool part of it. I remember playing that game and being like, who, who is this? And like, oh, that's Zelda. That's so cool. I was, when I, when we first met Sheik, I was thinking it might be uh, like a traitor from Ganondorf's side and stuff like that. I was like, mm-hmm. I thought they were going to play the angle of like, can I really trust this person? And th- mm-hmm. it is kind of like, can I really trust this person? And, and the answer is you are being deceived. Right but for a reason and for good. Yeah. Um, there's also Naburu, who's a, who's a strong female character in okay. Ocarina of Time. I like this. I like this. So she is the sage, uh, the spirit, right? She becomes the... Yeah. yeah. Sage of spirit. Um, and she, you know, wants to escape where she was born, the circumstances that she was born into. She mm-hmm. doesn't agree. She says, you know, Ganondorf is not my king. Mm-hmm. I don't have to do what he says. She like, still hits on Link a bit, but we'll we'll go. We'll keep going. She flirts with him, but I think it's kind of in a, like, I'm clearly older than you and I'm kind Got of it. just humoring you. I see. Um, Ooh, I wonder if it's even sarcastic. You can't tell if you, when you're just reading it, but anyway. Yeah, there's a, let's see. A screenshot here that I was looking at where she is saying, You've got guts, I think I like you. Ah. Like, but it's kind of more like a I'm joking around with you, but I see. Maybe, maybe, you know, to get you to do this thing that I want you to do, I can butter you up a little bit and yep. like flirt with you a little bit and be like, Hey, you're pretty cool. Now go get these things for me. <laughs> um But yeah, I think that was another good example of a, a stronger and a little more nuanced character. I mean, it's, I'm into this. It's Ocarina, so she's not fully fleshed out or anything like that. But you know, she's a warrior too. I do like that the Gerudo, in general, is a tribe of strong women. Yeah, especially Breath of the Wild. My goodness, they have they all have eight packs. So <laughs> I think the Gerudo are kind of cool in Breath they of the are. Wild. Honestly, um, they're their own girl club and right. um. I don't know how I feel about the cross-dressing link thing, like how necessary it is. Um, I sometimes liked wearing those clothes just because it felt like for once I was playing as a female character, which I've spoken about in another yeah. episode. Where I really like, appreciated the, I guess, the cross-dressing character that Link interfaces with to get into uh, Gerudo Town. Mm-hmm. I actually really liked that that character existed, mm-hmm. honestly. Mm-hmm. I thought that was super cool. Um Link cross-dressing, fine. The one thing about the Gerudo in Breath of the Wild is a few of them, act, it, 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 there's a little bit of the whole, like, I just got to get out in the world and find a man storyline, mm, which mm-hmm. they're so cool that it's like, you don't need to do that. You don't need, yeah. They, it, they're, 90% of them are super strong in Breath of the Wild mm-hmm. at the time you experience. And then all of a sudden it turns into like girl slumber party when they just got to go find a man. And it's, that's like, it's a little, ooh, ooh, but still in general, I yeah. think the Gerudo are super cool. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a little troubling, but, uh, <laughs> cause you never, well, there are, I think there must be some male characters who are like, I got to go find a wife, but not in the same kind of way or not as many. One thing I do like about the Gerudo in any of the games where they're represented in any of the games is that they could it could very easily be the Amazon uh, Amazonian trope, right? Mm-hmm. It could very easily be like we're big, strong women, but guess what? We actually have enormous parts, <laughs> right? You know what I mean, right? And 
I'm happy that that's not necessarily the case. <clears throat> Certainly not as much in Breath of the Wild. They're just no. strong women. They're strong. Well, women. I mean, literally strong women. Yeah, I agree. They because uh, something that I get very annoyed with in video games is when female characters are basically naked right. for no reason, especially mm -hmm. when they sh they really shouldn't be. Like, yep. if you're a warrior or you're fighting, like. How come you're not wearing any clothing? Like we, when we had our review episode of Beyond Good and Evil, I mentioned how cool it was that Jade wore human clothes, right. like pants, yeah, and full shirt. pants. But in, in the thing is, it's cool about it is that she had a jacket, but she was still, and I mean this, she was still like sexy. She had her own like vibe happening. You know what she I mean? She was cool. She was cool, right? But she didn't have to be naked to be cool. Exactly. Like, like the Gerudo, I mean, for one thing, the Gerudo also live in the desert. So of course they're not going to be wearing mm -hmm. a lot of clothes, but they're not wearing like ridiculously inappropriate outfits. Yeah. Um, going back to the Ocarina of Time, you are correct that those fairies are troublesome. Yeah. I don't know. I wonder if Ocarina had many Voice, you know, okay, so um, during the days of Ocarina, as I even have recently learned, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it would be the teams were small, they were big, but they were small. So, what so it might be a team of 20 people these days, it's teams of hundreds. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to say is, they might it might accidentally happen where it's like, okay, I'm very much joking right now, it's like. Gary, you go do the fairies. Uh, John, you go do the houses. You know, um, Anderson, you go do the the goblins. And if John did the fairies, there it is. There wasn't like a much of a committee. I think sometimes, mm. you know, and okay, it got built. Here we go. We keep moving. Maybe the teams were a bit smaller, and some of that the imbalance. I'm trying to speak to the imbalance in Ocarina. Yeah, um, I would. Imbalance. I would love to know like what that design came from <laughs> like what how did this character where did this character come from what is she modeled on like right. she is the one with the large parts and no clothing yeah so and like the cackling laugh and the the blowing of the kisses and the the poses that they put her in yeah. i mean this game is for kids and that part definitely didn't seem like it was for kids yeah if the po if there were any more polygons it would have been pretty inappropriate yeah i'm serious just the the various ways that they're yeah laying she's laying on her side or she's mm -hmm. yeah it i didn't quite understand why and uh, i think the the Breath of the Wild fairies are more like gregarious. They're just kind of like, woohoo, I'm a fun lady. Yeah. And less like, ooh, hi. Yeah, they're the closest to the Ocarina ones because definitely, I guess I'll just say Nintendo, I don't know if they backtracked, but they hightailed it out of the sexy vine fairy thing mm -hmm. because in uh, in the other games, in Skyward Sword, they're almost like angelic. They're almost like statuesque. Mm -hmm. They get very regal, the, the the fairies, that is, very quickly. Wind, we're, we, Wind Waker, they're almost just like monoliths, if I recall. Mm -hmm. um, and even in uh, Minish Cap, they're, I think they have long hair, but they're just much more, I guess angelic is a way to say it. Yeah. Um, Link's Awakening, they're kind of like little kids, aren't they? Like they're, yeah. they look like yeah. little girls. Which is close to the look of the fairies in the original The Legend of Zelda. Ah. Just slightly more cartoony, maybe because there's less pixels. They did make it stronger. You know, we talked about this in the Link's Awakening episode in season one. Um, but. I, mean, I think that's appropriate for a fairy to be like a little girl. Mm -hmm. Like. That makes sense to well, the, me. Well, the whole pixie thing, like yeah. the, the Peter Pan thing that a lot of Legend of Zelda was aesthetically based on in the beginning. Mm, yes. You so know? why she needs to be this almost naked, cackling, heavily makeuped yeah. woman, I don't know. I think the Breath of the Wild fairies are the <clears throat> closest to that like reference. Yep. I agree, but done better. Yeah. Yeah. They're Slightly. fine. They're, They're cool. not perfect, but... A little bit. There's there's still like the odd gratuitous shots of their body when you first open them up, which is like, what are we what are we doing here? That's true. And I and like you said, I think that is a nod to Ocarina of Time. You're like, oh haha, ha, the Maybe. fairy. Yeah. Um but uh but anyway. Yeah, um so other female characters we have um I never know if it should be Fee or Fi. <laughs> Fee Fi, the from Skyward Sword. She's the yeah. master sword, she's the spirit of the sword. Um, so I think that's interesting that they made that spirit female. Like, yeah, that's cool. It's not, you or if, even if she's artificial intelligence, she's, she's a, 
represented as she. I'm so sorry, I just interrupted. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I like her because she is tough in that she is the spirit of the sword, um, the master sword, which hello is in every game. Um, who knew that that was going to be a female sword? You know, mm-hmm. like it's it's a cool it's neat. Uh, look at it. But she's also analytical. She's intelligent. She's smart. Um, yeah. Okay. Why she needs Link, I'm not exactly sure because it seems like she can do just about everything. I mean, she doesn't have the emotion part, which is something that she eventually kind of learns from Link. This might be a stretch, but what if like, what is Siri or the Amazons or the Google, the Alexas, the whatever, but like, what is Siri to us? Siri, just go with me on this is a bit of a stretch. Oh, is so powerful, knows all the data, knows so much more than I know, mm-hmm. but it takes a human to execute on that data or make a choice on that data. You know what I mean? True. And so maybe that's the relationship. <clears throat> True. So, um, yeah, I I think that that was a cool development. Plus, in that game, you have Zelda becoming known as the goddess Hylia, like in her mortal form. So yeah. now in Skyward Sword, not only do you have the sword being female, you have Zelda really taking on more of a role and you're just learning more about her and who she really is. Like she's way more important than maybe you thought she was or, you know, how she was introduced initially. Mm -hmm. She is the goddess, like as a human, I thought that was, that was really cool. And, um, in the newer games, I just appreciate so much her being much more involved in the story. Yeah, I agree. The Zelda from the, the Zelda Zelda from Skyward Sword who becomes Hylia a little bit like how Demise kind of finds new Ganondorfs. Does Hylia find new Zeldas? I don't really know. Or do they become they become it a bit like how Link becomes the hero? Yeah, I don't know if the game series is as clear with that part of it. Because then did Helia did she create the three goddesses that then kind of become Furor, Din, and I Nero? believe so. Yeah. That sounds right. I know we had kind of talked about this in another episode. I'm trying to remember, but I think I believe so. We have not done a Skyward Sword review episode, right? No. No, I don't think so. No. We were going to have to pay attention to that when we but play But we, we talked about the goddesses yeah. in, in one of our other episodes. Um, episode 18 or something. I can't remember. Yeah. Season one. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. I, I mean, talking more about Zelda since, you know, she's going to be kind of a an object of this conversation. Mm-hmm. Um Twilight Princess, she didn't have much to do at all. Um, right. But I did like her look. I liked her. She was like this solemn. She seemed to have a lot of knowledge. She seemed like she would be a good leader if she were in charge. Yeah. But well, she's in, not in the, able to be. In the pre-story, she is. Right. And like, you know, in the game, it's not as much, but her story, maybe it's not in the narrative, but in her story, if I'm saying this correctly, mm-hmm. She's almost a queen. I mean, she's super cool and strong. And I just realized we are 46 minutes into I saw you look at the clock, too. Oh. Look at this. We are 46 minutes. We need to take a break. I don't have too much more, but uh, if we can we come definitely back, take a break. If we come back and only have 10 minutes, it's fine. We went way over on our first half here. <laughs> um, so we're going to come back and maybe do some Zelda stuff? Yeah. Let's do it. All right, cool. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, bye. Hey everybody, David here. I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. I just wanted to talk to you about some of the updates we have on our Patreon page. Now, as some of you know, we do have our three tiers, the sword tier, the white sword tier, and the magical sword tier. And we've been getting some really tremendous support over on Patreon. It's it's truly amazing. And I want to tell you a little bit about some of our new rewards. So for starters, we've decided to add the wallpaper reward to our sword tier. This means that anyone who is a supporter on Patreon will get a special thank you on our website and they'll also receive the ability to download wallpapers once a month from our Patreon page. Now I make these wallpapers myself and it's a lot of fun. They come in a variation of screen sizes. I also make a phone version and an iPad version. I even make an Apple Watch version which is kind of fun. Next we have our white sword tier and that's staying pretty much the same. What the white sword level will give you is early access to each of our episodes. Typically it's about a week before. Um, Also advertisement free versions of those episodes and I record a little patreon specific intro before each one just a touch of behind the scenes before we get into the episodes also of course on the white sword tier we have our bonus content which we release just little mini episodes every oh i don't know every three or four normal episodes we put a little mini episode in there that will also be available on the private rss link that you'll receive by becoming a white sword member 
And lastly, this is the big one. Our magical sword tier, Kate and I have decided to bring a camera with us into the studio, you could say, every single episode going forward after episode 17 of season two. So we just kind of set this camera up and we say a little quick intro to our magical sword patrons and we let them be there with us, so to speak, while we record the episode. I'm really excited about this because I've been wanting to give our magical sword supporters something really special, and I think this is a great way to do it. Okay, so that's it. You can go to patreon.com slash another Zelda podcast. You can also find links on our website to our Patreon page. We're so grateful for the support we've received already, and um, if you are interested in any of these rewards at all, please go check us out. Hey, this is TC. And this is Jim from the Studio Demands It podcast. Where every episode we take a demand from a hypothetical studio. Which could be you. And challenge ourselves to conceptualize, pitch, and craft a film based on the stipulations. Or the demands. We are given. We talk about movies all the time. Particularly, we complain about the choices made in the films we've seen. We're nerds like that. And, of course, like any good nerd does, we automatically assume that we could do better. Even with the demands and restrictions that clearly must have been put on by a production. So head on over to studiodemandsit.com and listen to our previous library of episodes. Our library of previous episodes. Our precious library, Jim. <laughs> our library of precious episodes. <laughs> You're a pirate Smeagol. <laughs> uh, okay. So head on over to studiodemandsit.com to listen to our library of episodes. And submit your demand for a future episode, too. So go do that. Okay, bye. Okay, end of ad. Welcome back to another Zelda podcast. We took a quick break and we are back to finish our discussion of female characters in the Legend of Zelda series. So we left off, weirdly enough, with Zelda. Yeah, we took uh, a real time, super quick break. Yeah, yeah. We're just yeah, like, yeah. okay, we'll come back. We'll come back. And we're back. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I was just kind of going over the various iterations of Zelda and how different her character is from game to game. And we last, last left off with Twilight Princess. Um, and then obviously in, uh, moving kind of forward to Breath of the Wild, since we haven't talked too much about her character in that game in, yeah, sure. in this episode just yet, um, she is tasked with like keeping the world in order. In like, breath? yeah. Yeah. She has to figure out how to seal away the calamity or Ganon or however you want to refer to him. Um, she has to seal away the evil of the world. No big deal, right? Yeah, she has a tremendous amount of responsibility put upon her in that game. Yeah, and part of the reason I I love that game so much is because you see that weight on her. Yeah, I agree. In the cutscenes, I think it's very cool how, I mean, think of where she started, you know, save the princess. And now it's like the princess is like, Okay, princess, save the world. It's right. so yeah. it's kind of a cool full circle moment. And in Breath of the Wild, the only reason Link is awake is because Zelda's super busy doing the most important thing, which is holding Ganon. Mm -hmm. Now, mechanically, she's the princess in the tower, but story wise, that's how they got around it. Story wise, she's right. doing the most important thing, so she can't do the other things. So Link will go do those things. So she can do the final thing, which is zap him into nothingness. <laughs> yeah. Like she is so powerful. And and again, we discussed this at the beginning of this episode. Like I hope there's more for her to do or she has a bigger role and is not hidden away the whole time mm -hmm. in Breath of the Wild 2 or whatever it will be called. Um, but I, I just really liked getting to know her more. She obviously has a voice now, so that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much I love the weird British accent thing, but it's cool that Zelda can speak and yeah. you get to see her journey from like, okay, I got to do this and then doubting herself and, you know, having a breakdown. Like it was just so cool to see her really fleshed out as a person her storyline in Breath of the Wild was one of my top 10 emotional storylines in that episode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I think it can only go up from here. I think, thank goodness, you know, the game developers really hear people. Like, it, this is not a new idea for for 
people to, to want to play as a strong female character or for Zelda to have more to do or for Zelda to be more powerful or, you know, et cetera, with these games. Like, mm-hmm. I, you search for female characters in, in Legend of Zelda and Google will give you results of like, why isn't there like yeah. one to play as? Or like, what can we do? Like, we want more, we want more. So I think it can only go up from here, which is cool. They've kind of made Link less manly too, as we've gone. Yeah, he's definitely getting more and more androgynous. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he's still like a fit fellow in Breath of the Wild, but he's not muscular. He's not like mm-hmm. the the big dude to, you know what I mean? Right, right. And um, kind of going back to this too, I don't necessarily think that he needs to be super feminine right. or or continue the cross dressing thing or be a female character. Um, we mentioned Linkle, who I don't know really anything about. Um, She's almost fan fiction. Okay. So it's like, we don't necessarily need that, mm-hmm. um, a female version of Link. No, I, I don't think so. I mean, and some people do and want, mm-hmm. and that's that's fine. But um, I, for me, I'm just kind of like, no, nah, I don't need a female Link or, or a brand new character. Mm-hmm. But um, having Zelda be able to like really do something <laughs> like I want to control her in some kind of way would be awesome. I don't have any issues with Linkle existing. I think, I think what that was happening was kind of cool. Um, in my opinion, Linkle came out of a time, which might still be happening, but I remember about, I don't know, five or six years ago in the, in the cosplay uh, space, it was very cool and fun and popular to do <clears throat> gender swap cosplays of characters, mm-hmm. which I thought was super neat is it, 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 Creates takes a certain amount of creativity. It takes a mm-hmm. certain amount of artistry. I thought it was really really cool when I'd see gender swap, th- uh, gender swap cosplays. Um, and so when Hyrule Fantasy was getting made, the team what is it? Team Ninja, I think. They're the it's the it's the Ninja Gaiden guys. Ninja Gaiden guys. Um, well, it's the Dynasty Warrior guys. But I think that, that mm-hmm. no, I might be thinking Team Ninja. They're the oh, Team Ninja did other M is what it is is what I'm getting confused about. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but that team kind of came up with the Linkle idea because they also remember with Hyrule Warriors, it's almost a Smash Brothers Mario Kart thing where it's almost mm-hmm. ridiculous how many characters they have. Mm-hmm. I mean, Agatha is a playable oh, yeah. fighting character That's in Hyrule great. Warriors eventually. And so to, for them to Agatha. go like, let's do a gender swap link while the gender swap cosplay was really popular. Mm-hmm. I get it. Now I will say, I don't have an issue with the concept of a Linkle at all. And I think one way that it could work I'm not talking about having a game where there's a guy to play and a girl to play, but having a game where you pick your gender in the beginning, which does happen with plenty of role-playing games. Mm -hmm. If there was a Zelda game where if you picked, if you wanted to play as a male or a female in the beginning, and it was Link or Linkle, and somehow that storyline still stayed true, they didn't have to, they wouldn't have to like get cheeky and turn Zelda into a guy or have Linkle have- You could still save an ambiguous orientation. But if the narrative kind of- it was strong enough that it didn't require and you could be a guy or a girl. I think that could be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I don't, I also don't love the name Linkle. I think okay. it kind of takes away from yeah. the power that the name Link, Link. has. It makes it kind of Linkle. girly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Li- at least it's not like Linky. <laughs> Linky D. <laughs> Linky D. I don't that's know. That's it. No, that's, that's Link's uh, hip hop career. That's his. Um, yep. Linky D. Yep. Um, but going in the vein of, okay, what if there was a new female character? Let's talk about Midna really quickly. Cool. Um, so Midna is a, I think, an awesome female character. Um, I think she's the one that I identify with the most. Cool. Um, I really like her a lot. I mean, that's- Oh, that sassy attitude. That sassy attitude. She is sarcastic. She is funny. She likes to joke around even when things are desperate. Mm-hmm. But she, you know, she's- I can't say human, but, you know, she can get hurt and then you have that emotional storyline where she gets injured and you have to save her and she's weak. And um, so she's not perfect, but she likes to kind of build herself up like she is and kind of be like, yeah, I'm awesome. I know it. When you know that inside she's like, how do I how do I do this? I got to I got to save my she's scrambling, isn't she? A little bit. Yeah. Um, Even though she has. 
like super awesome powers, she's kind of scrambling on what to do. Yeah, that is neat. Yeah, and like you said, she does have super awesome powers. She can battle too. I mean, I really like her. Um, I, you know, was not the biggest fan of that final moment where she turns into her true form and she's almost <laughs> naked. Or, yeah, you know, almost naked, I know. Uh, not great. I mean, technically, it's not like she's going into battle. It's kind of more of a ceremonial outfit. But even so, did you need to, like... She's scantily clad. Right. Not super necessary. Um, because it kind of... I feel like that kind of takes away from all the power that she has had this entire game. Um, and the, you know, the respect you have for this character at the end, you're like, oh, that's unfortunate. Well, you know, here's the thing. It's not that sexy characters can't be powerful. They absolutely 100% can be. Yes. Um, but it did feel like. Sexy out of nowhere. Yeah, a little bit. It felt like we're just, it, it felt like we're, it felt like old school. We're, I'm so sorry to say it, but it felt like old school. We're just going to give you the skin reward. Like, mm-hmm. okay, you got to the end of the game. Here's your reward. Here's the princess in the castle. Guess what? The thing that was with you. Ooh, she's super sexy now. Yeah. I liked the I mean, look I of her. I think they pan down her body. Yeah. 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 I, I'm fine with costume choices. Where, like, you know, the Gerudo in Breath of the Wild, they're fairly scantily clad uh, as far as, but it's like weather appropriate and they have the huge pants. It's not, we don't get like <clears throat> weird shots of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I like the look of her her humanesque character. Other mm-hmm. than that, like her makeup is cool. Her hair is cool. Yeah. She is a cool vibe. I like the clothes other than they don't leave a lot to the imagination. Like I, I like the style of them. Mm-hmm. But um, so that was kind of like a ooh, kind of creepy moment. But I love Midna so much. She is one of my favorite video game characters in general, cool. I think. Just because she has so much personality. Um, so I think she's a real asset to Twilight Princess and one of the reasons that I love that game mm-hmm. so very much. Um, and then, um, oh, duh, Tetra. We got to talk about Tetra Let's since do it. we're talking about um, different versions of Zelda. So Tetra is an example of something that had so much potential. And we talked about this in our Wind Waker review yeah. episode. So much potential that just went nowhere. Well, it had. Yeah, right. Yeah. It goes nowhere as you play the game. Right. I feel like when they were building the universe for Wind Waker, she probably could have just stayed as her throughout the entire mm-hmm. story. They just ran out of time and could only make a third of the story. <sighs> yeah. So it's such a bummer when... She's like, oh, I'm Princess Zelda. Okay, bye. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> she it's pulls a cape right. in the podcast and says, okay, bye. Yeah. And has to hide away. Like, that's my least favorite thing is when Zelda then has to hide. I guarantee it's because, and, I, and it's a little sassy for me to say, they ran out of, they didn't finish their story. They didn't finish yeah. writing their story for yeah. Wind Waker. And so, okay, let's lock her up. Yeah, she deserved so much more story mm-hmm. than that. It like it's one of those things like when I watch a movie and someone goes away for a while or something happens to them off screen, you're like, what were they doing that whole time? Like, what are I feel bad for them? It's like, what is Zelda doing this whole time? She's sitting in a dark, lonely underwater castle, like just hanging out mm-hmm. like how boring. It's not even that she gets sealed away. She j- I, I don't think she just says. You know, I have to stay here because you can go back and talk to her, I think, right? I, I That I don't know. I don't think I ever went back and talked to her. Uh, I feel like I did. But she's not frozen in a gem no. or turns into a statue she's like not, the other times. She's not trapped per se. I mean, she kind of is, but not like... She's kept. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she just sits and waits. Like, what is she doing? Just like... Sorry, Link, ran out of story. Playing bingo? I don't understand, but uh, I Cause, like Because she's so engaging as Tetra. Yes, um, kind of being in on it. She's part of the some of these little cutscenes. She's kind of she's a bit of a chic to Link in the beginning. I just realized mm-hmm. it's uh, uh, you know visual uh, interpreted a different way, but she's a side character that's affecting his journey. Kind of gets it mm-hmm. and is 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 pinging in here and there. And she kind of has a little bit of Midna sassiness too. Mm-hmm. She's you know she does her little wink and yep. she you know has a sense of humor. She's in charge of these dopey pirates. Like she is the captain <laughs> right. of that ship. Like so much potential. Um, I like Tetra. I don't like Tetra as Zelda, but I like Tetra. Um, I don't think Tetra likes Tetra as Zelda. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, she she got a raw deal. She got turned into Zelda. And she's kind of like, okay, I okay. gotta stay here. Mm. 
I mean, at least she gets like the super powerful arrows at the end, but whatever. Yeah. Um, but there is a website that I found, a list of 10 totally badass, I'm sorry for swearing. That's fine. Women from the Legend this of is like, Zelda this series. This is like a m- almost, this is like a hard PG episode anyway. It's okay. Uh, right. I've said the word sexy many times. <laughs> True. Um, so yeah, I, I used this like little list to get some information for this episode. Some of these uh, picks I don't necessarily agree with, like Saria. She's important. I wouldn't necessarily call her like a tough chick. So I, uh, in my episode with Dan, one of his final questions to me was, if you had to pick four characters, if you know, let's hypothesize that Link was captured mm-hmm. and you had to pick four Zelda characters to team up and save him, mm-hmm. who's your fantasy football dream team? Mm-hmm. I picked Impa, Midna, and Saria. And then I can't. I think we decided on Rivali, Rivaldi as the fourth. It was kind of a collective thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I picked Saria because she, I picked her because she would be. She might have. She might be imbued with some spiritual energy and power, but just because she would be so driven to do anything to go help Link. That's true. Um, but yeah, maybe she's not like knocking down mountains or anything, but f- it was enough for me to pick her to be in that dream team. I will say. I, I love her character. I think she's like so sweet to always be looking out for him. And like, she's Link's best friend and mm. she gives him an ocarina. Like, ob- like you said, she would do anything right. for her best friend. Um, I guess maybe I wish that she, <sighs> I, I like that she can talk to him and everything, right. but I felt like there was something else that could be given to her to do that would be cool. There was something missing, I guess. Yeah, no problem. Um, and then Princess Rudo. Oof. Rudo? Rudo is, you know. Ocarina, the, right? Yeah. You Not know. Mifa. I, obviously, I'm getting those two confused sometimes. Right. Rudo okay. Is I'm gonna marry you. I'm in love with you. You're my husband now. Yeah, I was not particularly impressed with Rudolph. I mean, she does go through obviously some liberal growth and you know becomes an adult, and she's like, ah, there's no time for marriage now. But like, I she was obsessed with. The yeah, but even she does the thing. whole like, oh look, you've turned into quite a man mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. So and and the whole like. I'm entitled. Go get this stuff for me and carry me around everywhere. Meh. So I don't know that I would necessarily put her on a list of badass women. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I agree. But what are some that are, this is like a blog or something you found? Is what yeah, you're basically. Here. So some of the ones on there that I did agree with are like Midna, Zelda, mm-hmm. obviously, um, Sheik, Impa, you know, ones that we've kind Got of it. talked about so far that I'm like, yeah, I'm on the same page. All right, cool. But that's, that's really it. I mean, we kind of talked about you know, where I would like to see the series go. We we kind of started with that, actually. I think there's just so much potential, and I'm really excited to see where Breath of the Wild 2 takes us. Um, I agree with you that we don't necessarily need them, Link and Zelda, being together, together teamed up all the time. Like, if, if you could just play a Zelda sometimes doing her own thing, maybe she's like, okay, we're going to split up Link. You go here, I go here. Mm-hmm. And then maybe you can switch between them or something. I don't know. A little bit That'd of Resident cool. Evil Zero there. But mechanically, it might be Twilight Princess where you're wolf or not. Like mm, you're one right. play style or another play style. And that might work just fine. Yeah. Um, also, it, it's interesting because Zelda games are so tuned. Uh, and what I mean by that is their, the level design, their control, <laughs> the way that Link is tuned to the game. Mm -hmm. Um, You never have a weird, almost never have a weird invisible wall. You pretty much know exactly what Link can do, how he can do it, and every little nook and cranny. I mean, honestly, if you watch some Breath of the Wild speedruns, there are holes all (laughs) over that game where you can clip through (laughs) polygons and everything. But for the most part, Zelda games are so tuned Mm -hmm. that um, just throwing a second character in with a different mechanic, you'd have to also make sure the the game is tuned for that character, but mm-hmm. better yet, hopefully you could do it where the, so a lot of times in Zelda games, they're famous for like having two states of the world. It's the small and the big or the dark and the light and the whatever, right? Right. What if the world never changes, but the character changes, thus the state of the world changes because of that, what those characters' mm. abilities are? That could be neat. I don't know. That'd be and awesome. Maybe it would be a switch back and forth thing like you were saying. Yeah. I will say Zelda feels like um, in the Breath of the Wild 2 trailer, 
Maybe it's just because she's on a journey with Link. Maybe she's suiting up to go on the journey. But she really does feel like of the earth in that trailer where mm-hmm. she was. I mean, she literally shows up in like a white dress at the end of Breath of the Wild 1. She's almost ethereal. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But like she's back on in a, it. on a planet, on a something yeah. in that trailer. And I think that's cool. Yeah. I so agree. much so that she's like chopped the hair off and like, hey, you know, we got to get real about this. She pulled a Mulan. Maybe. Or, or <laughs> she just has it braided up. But it's definitely not, you know. Yeah. It's not going to get too muddy. Yeah, so I am I am excited for that. I can't wait to see what is next. Um but cool. I would love to hear our listeners feedback on, you know, how they feel that female characters are portrayed, who mm-hmm. is their favorite female character, what hopes do you have for female characters in the future? Let us know your thoughts and um A lot of times with this listener feedback, the the best little gifts we'll get is when someone refers to like some obscure NPC mm. that has a great point or storyline that also fits into what we're talking about. Yeah. So if there are listeners out there that can think of characters or storylines or NPCs, even just the tiny little stories that happen in some of the Zelda games that might fit into this conversation, we would love to hear about it. We may not be able to reply to it until season three, but we'd love <laughs> to hear about it. Yeah. And David, tell them how they can reach out to us. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Over on Twitter, we are Another Zelda Pod. On Instagram, we're Another Zelda Podcast. You can find us on Facebook and YouTube just by searching Another Zelda Podcast or go to our actual website, anotherzeldapodcast.com, Whoa. where we have blogs. We have a blog by Carlos Gomez, literally titled, I Want to Play as Zelda, mm-hmm. on our website right now. And it's getting a bunch of views and a bunch of reads, which is super cool. Yeah. Um, personally, people can find me on Instagram and Twitter and Discord at Raptor Paint. Mm-hmm. And how about you, Kate? I am on Instagram at I only take cat pics. So come find me. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. Kate, you, we have a little bit of time now before we record our season finale. Mm-hmm. We both have a game to finish, a link to the past. Mm-hmm. I'm liking it. I'm liking it so far as I play. I need to get back in there and start playing it again. <laughs> well, we have, I think, full disclosure, I think we have about a month here. I think we've got three or four weeks to make mm-hmm. it happen when we're recording our season finale. We preloaded this one up uh, to record a little early. Can't wait to spend an hour and a half or whatever it is, two hours as we do Chatting. with these season finales, talking about that, Yeah. talking about the season and all the rest. So, Kate, uh, until then, for the listeners, it'll be, you know, two weeks from now. For us, right. it'll be about a month from now. Yeah. I'll see you then. Okay. Bye. Bye.